Pure Shape with SNB. SNB holds you to account. Whether you are school or not, any opportunity will create for skill acquisition. Please avail yourself that opportunity. Like I said, you can also... If you live around there, you know that they have what is called bush market. Very early in the morning, as early as 4 o'clock, down the road. I am a lawyer. And during Let me assume the, the, the man has not cited one project, consensus project, yeah. from that 1990. If they are there, today, I'm saying they are not much. If they are there in the element, I don't want to join you with my brother. Watch stewardship with SNB whenever, wherever, however, this time on RSTV. What do you do on a Thursday afternoon? Having lunch? Taking a drink? Watching TV in your living room or office? How much do you know about the politics, economy, and how monies are being expended by those saddled with the responsibility of managing human, material, and natural resources? It's daring, incisive, revealing, and informative. Watch Stewardship with SMB every Thursday at 12.30 p.m. on RSTV. Join us. Stewardship with SNB. Hello, good afternoon. It's Thursday, the 27th day of June 2019. It's another date with the program Stewardship with SNB. As usual, we'll have my take before I unveil my guest in the studio. Since you have refused to take the war to the cultists, government will take the war to you, the traditional rulers. These were some of the utterances by the governor of River State, His Excellency Yesome Zewenwiki, when he had in audience traditional rulers, security agencies, local government chairmen, youth bodies, and others on the spate of cult-related issues in River State. Months after, that charge by the governor started yielding positive results as some ethnic nationalities swung into action by engaging these cultists in, in peace talks with a high sense of diplomacy, leading to their surrendering of arms and themselves. The Akbar ethnic nationality has since been given a pat on the back by taking a bold step in fighting criminality to a standstill in their area. The Ezeigbu Upata, His Majesty Dr. Felix Otuaribo, in conjunction with the Aouda East and West local government traditional rulers, were able to persuade some of these cultists to surrender their arms to government with a guarantee to be forgiven. The question is, is the state government amnesty program still subsisting? What is the guarantee that these supposedly repentant cultists will not return back to the trenches? To answer this and many more questions, I have with me in the studio the Eze Egbu Upata and Chairman Aouda East Council of Traditional Rulers, his Royal Majesty Eze Felix Otuaribo. To join the conversation, call the number 0033413360 or send text messages only to the number 0053478400. You can watch us live on GoTV channel 103 and Star Times channel 113. You can also watch our previous editions of the program on YouTube at Stewardship with SNB. Join our social media platforms on Facebook and Twitter still at Stewardship with SNB. My name is Solomon Nelson Braid, your host. I'll take a short break and I'll come back to the live studio and unveil who my guest is. Join us again. What do you do on a Thursday afternoon? Having lunch? Taking a drink? Watching TV in your living room or office? How much do you know about the politics, economy, and how monies are being expended by those saddled with the responsibility of managing human, material, and natural resources? It's daring, incisive, revealing, and informative. Watch Stewardship with SMB every Thursday at 12.30 p.m. on RSTV. Join us. Stewardship with SNB. SNB. 
S and B holds you to account. Whether you are school or not, any opportunity will create for skill acquisition. Please avail yourself that opportunity. Like I said, you can you also... around there, you know that they have what is called bush market. Very early in the morning, as early as 4 o'clock, down the road. I am a lawyer. And during, Let and me show me. The man has not cited one project, consensus project, mm -hmm. from that night. If they are there, today. I'm saying they are not much. If they are there in the element, I don't want to join issue with my brother. Watch stewardship with SNB whenever. Wherever, however, this time on Irish TV. Stewardship with SNB. Stewardship with SNB. What do you do on a Thursday afternoon? Having lunch? Taking a drink? Watching TV in your living room or office? How much do you know about the politics, economy, and how monies are being expended by those saddled with the responsibility of managing human, material, and natural resources? It's daring, incisive, revealing, and informative. Watch Stewardship with SMB every Thursday at 12.30 p.m. on RSTV. Join us. Stewardship with SNB. SNB holds you to account. Whether you're in school or not, any opportunity will create for skill acquisition. Please avail yourself that opportunity. Like I said, you can also sleep around there, you know that they have what is called bush market. Very early in the morning, as early as 4 o'clock, down the road. I am a lawyer. And during, Let and me show me. The man has not cited one project, consensus project, mm -hmm. from that night. If they are there, today, I'm saying they are not much. If they are there in the element, I don't want to join issue with my brother. Watch stewardship with SNB whenever, wherever, however, this time on Irish TV. Well, if you have just joined us, you're on to the program Stewardship with SNB, and my guest today in the studio is Eze Igbu Upata, His Majesty Dr. Felix Otuwaripo, who is the chairman of the Awoda East Council of Traditional Rulers. Your Majesty, welcome to Stewardship with SNB. Thank you. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, viewers. Yes. Your Majesty, you took a bold step, you and you are Council of Traditional Rulers in both the Aouda East and the Aouda West local government area. You were able to lure and persuade these uh, cultists in those areas, disturbing the peace of the area. And then one would have thought that it's a very scary uh, attempt to, to delve into. But you did it. How did you go about it? Well, uh, first, um, I give glory to God for putting us in the position we have found ourselves. And um, I commend the governor of River State, Nyeso Mezewawike, you know, for providing the right leadership. There are situations that uh, individual potentials ca cannot be realized until you are pushed to, you know, to realize the hidden potentials in you. So His Excellency demonstrated that when he had a meeting with us and uh, charged all the traditional rulers to return to their domains and uh, end insecurity. And so based on that charge, we went home you know, review the situation and uh, took bold steps to ensure that peace reigns in 
Ahoda East and Ahoda West. And so today we are happy that um, you know uh, our effort has yielded some results. Okay, talking about the governor's charge uh, about a few months ago, uh, let's refresh our memory with uh, what the governor said recently. Uh, studio assistants, let's hear the governor again. I just want to say clearly now, whether you are first class, you are classless, you are third class, and you think the essence of being a chief, a traditional ruler, is not for you to wear just the uh, regalia. There are so much responsibility. And so if you don't want to take the word to them, we are going to take the word to you. Stewardship with SNB. SNB. Your Majesty, were you propelled by the governor's charge? If you don't take the war to the cultists, government will take the war to you, the traditional rulers. That charge must have informed your thought to gather your colleagues to swing into action. Am I correct? Uh, actually, the decision to end insecurity in Ebelam started uh, at about August last year. Okay. You know, before, before the governor's charge. Before the governor's charge. Uh, before uh, August. You know, we had um, some few cases of uh, kidnap, kidnappings and all that. Mm. And so from August, we tried to identify, you know, the various camps, who these persons are and uh, how to tackle them. Mm. It might interest people of River State to know that on 30th December, after several meetings in Port Harcourt at home and uh, several places, on 30th December, we I wrote to the security agencies in Ahoda, all the security agencies, mm. asking them to allow me to have direct discussion with uh, these young people, and that um, I had invited them to my palace, and that they should give them free passage to meet with me. And so on that 30th, they left their various camps and came to my house at home. Okay. You know, it was something very terrifying because when the... Uh, I the, was going to the, ask if yes, you were not scared. When, no, I wasn't scared. When the people around saw them, everybody was scared. And uh, I assured our people that uh, they have come for peace. You know, I entertained them, a kind of a Christmas stroke, New Year entertainment. Mm. Mm. And uh, treated them well, after which they returned to their various camps. No one was arrested. Okay. And because they came and I entertained them, and... On 31st December, I made a proclamation in Opata when we had our meeting, the, the last meeting of the year, mm. that uh, communities should accept those ones that are willing to stay home. And I had discussions with uh, security agencies, you know, urging them not to arrest any of them, that uh, it's a gradual process, you know, and they will get to, you know, rehabilitate but, uh, Let me interject. A community is a place where everybody knows everybody. Yeah. And if you have killed my family member, I know that you killed. Do you think that they will have total forgiveness from the people amongst whom they will live? Again, what kind of program would cover these repen so-called repentant cultists now that they are out of the trenches? The, no the, more amnesty by the governor. The, one of the pillars mm. of the Christian faith is forgiveness. And so we have uh, asked our people to have a place in their hearts to forgive these young people. They may have done it out of mistake or out of uh, zebrans or whatever, mm. or influence of drug, you know. But those are our past. And so we are looking out to a very bright and rosy future. And so we are not uh, so looking at... Who is given, we, we, given a new future? We know that mm. our people have pains in their hearts, mm. you know. A lot of persons have been killed, uh, abductions and all that. And so it's painful, mm. you know, but if you can forgive it will lessen the pain in your heart and the society will be healed mm. and so like i said his excellency the governor of river state has provided that right leadership and if you have the right leadership at the center it flows down to even the community but if you have a leadership that is not focused at the center it affects other levels of leadership and so His Excellency has provided a focused and direct leadership, a visionary leader. And so we are only keying into what His Excellency is doing by matching his words with action. 
Okay, Your Majesty, we'll get back to all of that. Maybe we'll just take a, a listen to uh, when you led uh, the traditional rulers of Awoda West and East to the government house and then surrender this. And let's take a listen to the proceedings that went on on that day. Earlier, Eze Igbu Iputa, Dr. Felix Otuwa Rikpo said traditional rulers from Ahuda East and Ahuda West local government areas work with the security agencies to ensure that peace returned to Ekpe land. We visited our children in the camp, in their various camps, and we talked with them. We invited them home and had several meetings with them. And after a period of time, confidence was built. And so we were able to persuade them to lay down their arms for the good of our area. Knowing full well that without laying down their arms, it would be difficult for government to continue to implement its programs in the area of projects and other infrastructure. He said that the Deputy Speaker of River State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Lehia Edison, supported the peace process, which included confidence building and the return of arms by repentant criminals. Particularly placed on record, Your Excellency, the support we received from Right Honorable Edison Lehia, the Deputy Speaker of the River State House of Assembly. He supported us from day one till this day. with SNB. Your Majesty, that was you in Government House addressing the Governor and of course uh, uh, the people of River State in Government House. Uh, the Governor in a speech said this time around, since there will be no more uh, amnesty program, he coined it to be binding over. He said this time around, Government will adopt the binding over policy. Binding over policy in this case is handed over these uh, criminals to uh, to the courts or for prosecution, uh, so that it will serve as a deterrent to others. Now you have been able to bring out these boys from uh, from the forest, so to speak. Uh, now, the, the, what, what kind of I was asking? What deliberate program uh, do you think that the governor or the government will have for them now that they have they, they have been forgiven, so to speak? Because the governor says no more amnesty; it's binding over. Yes, uh, amnesty as a program cannot solve the problem of uh, insurgency. Okay. And um, the bullet too cannot stop criminality. You know, when you deploy soldiers and police to fight insurgency, of course they will arrest the criminal, some of them will go to jail, some will be killed but it doesn't end there. You know, when a criminal is killed, the ideology behind crime is not killed. Okay. You have killed the criminal, hmm. but another person grows up and picks that ideology and works with it and becomes a, you know, a more hardened... It, it will be a deterrent to a, others, a to, others to follow the same path? No, killing the criminal is not a deterrent. It, it hardens criminals. What about prosecuting the criminals? In fact, there are criminals you prosecute, they go to prison and come back, and they are more hardened than they were before. And so what we have on ground now is to destroy that ideology. Okay. What makes them become criminal in the first place? Okay. And so before, when the governor spoke and appealed to us to go home and ensure that we restore sanity in our domains, the first thing we did was to carry out a research what was the motivating factor for cultism? What were those things that are driven these children mm. to live in the bush rather than stay in the comfort of their homes? Mm. So we carried out a research. And it was the research findings that gave us the direction to go. You know? And with that research find findings, I called our son, the deputy speaker of the River State House Assembly, Honorable Edison here. I called him. We sat and reviewed the outcome of that uh, finding. And after the review, we got in touch with 
the two local government chairmen. You know, and I told them, look, I cannot restrict this to Opata Kingdom. Because if peace is restored in Opata Kingdom, and there's problem in Ako, Ibuduya, and Obie, mm. there will be spillover effect to Opata Kingdom. Mm. And so we have to incorporate our brothers in the other kingdoms in Epe to make sure that peace reigns in the entire Epe. Mm. And so we worked with this blueprint we had. And for a criminal to hand over AK-47, you know what it means. Mm. It's not... Uh, we, we, <laughs> we, we, we have heard about uh, one yes. Ibudu, Ibudu, a notorious criminal in that access. He's that dead. Was, yes. We also heard about uh, Ukela Ochoma, uh, who was also nicknamed Kumasi. No, Ukela Ochoma is uh, Boss Noah. Boss Noah. 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 Who was Kumasi? Kumasi is one of the leaders. Is he uh, one of the repentant cultists? Yes. And then we have one Obodo, who is also known as VIP. Yeah, yeah. These are all notorious criminals. Have you been able to gather all the bring out all these boys from? All of them are. These out. are the kingpins. Of all of them are out. They're out, yes, including Obodo. Except Obodo. Yes, Obodo have... could not surrender on that Thursday because he's treating an injury. An he's... injury from a gun duel. Yes, battle? from a gun duel with uh, the security, and so he was not stable that Thursday. Okay. And uh, we are in talks, and he has assured me that he will be out tomorrow. With his, with all his members. Okay, you will be receiving him tomorrow too. I'm receiving him tomorrow. And possibly hand him over to the government. No, I'm receiving him tomorrow. He will surrender tomorrow, and of course, the Ekpe Traditional Council will forgive him. Mm. You know, we are not uh, trying to do anything that will escalate mm. the security situation in our area. Mm. You know, we want them to come out voluntarily, hand over their weapons voluntarily, mm. and then we forgive them. We administer traditional oaths, mm. and after which we are meeting with His Excellency on Monday mm. to also request the governor to forgive them so that they can live freely in the society. How many arms but were you for able now, to retrieve from them? For now, mm. the Obodo, the VIP, has surrendered his own weapon to us. They are among the weapons we handed over. Okay, while nursing his injury. Yes, mm. okay. he has surrendered. We have recovered weapons from him okay. that, to demonstrate his seriousness mm. in this uh, process of restoring peace in Ekwe. So in all, how, how many weapons have, have, have you been able to retrieve from these uh, uh, boys, uh, so to speak? No, in speak? fact, uh, we have retrieved uh, a good number of AK-47s, a good number of uh, other weapons, including dynamite. I see. Uh, including dynamite. I see. And so uh, we have assured His Excellency that it's not just uh, what we did on uh, a few days ago, on uh, Tuesday, it's not the end of the story, mm. you know. After our discussion with His mm. Excellency, he has given us additional charge, and that's what we are working mm. on now. You know, and that additional charge we have taken it for. Yesterday, I was in one of the camps in Oweri. They have a camp close to Oweri. Okay. And in that camp, we have some of our children there. So I met with them yesterday. Okay. And you went I've, to the camp. Yes, I went to the camp. You went yesterday. to the camp. Yes. Oh, I see. You know, and I've told them to return home. That we want all of them home. You went with the security. No, no. I went with my just uh, my elderly and uh, one other officer, and we got to a hotel. I packed the vehicle in the hotel. What is life I, like? What is life like in the other world? Well, uh, to them they are living a good life, but to us, uh, the bush is meant for animals, not human beings. You know, we stopped at the hotel, and I requested them to send a bike to pick me. Mm. They sent a bike, and I went on the bike alone, and I had fruitful meeting with them. We Your, ma Your Majesty, uh, I must confess that uh, this is one great feat uh, a traditional ruler in River State has ever done. And I believe that um, other traditional rulers who are watching you will uh, tow your good path. Uh, but uh, one question that I want to ask you, what is the guarantee that these boys will not go back to the forest? But before you, you answer that question, let's take a lesson to uh, the governor who also made um, uh, a fatherly speech at the ceremony. SNB holds you to account. Whether you are school or not, any opportunity will create for skill acquisition. Please avail yourself that opportunity. Like I said, you can also. You live around there, you know that they have what is called bush packet. Very early in the morning, as early as 4 o'clock, down the road. I am a lawyer. And during Let me you. The man has not cited one project, consensus project, mm -hmm. from that 1990. If they are there, today. I'm saying they are not much. If they are there in the element, I don't want to. You have granted amnesty before. 
And after granting the amnesty, some of the boys went back. So what we decided to do is what we call binding over. What does that mean? So that tomorrow, you will not say that you are not part of it. We want to take it away. The court will bind them over. If you go back and do this thing again, then you have yourself to be blamed. So the security agencies and the court, they are working together, so they will bind them over. Let it be on record that they have been banded uh, over. So that in case they go back, then the law has to take its, uh, its course. So we will not just say, oh, go for amnesty. They must be banded uh, over. Get yeah, on the service. Stewardship with SNB. SNB. Your Majesty, you listened to the Governor, and you were also there. He, he emphasized on the phrase binding over, and that uh, uh, in the past, when government offered amnesty, uh, this boy still went back to the trenches. And the question now is, what is the guarantee that these boys will not go back to the trenches, thereby thwarting your good effort? Binding over. Let's talk about it. Prosecuting well, some well, of these uh, boys. Uh, uh, strategy being employed by His Excellency is um, one of the omissions of previous amnesty programs. You know, and uh, His Excellency bringing it now is to ensure that the current process of forgiving repentant militants or cultists, you know, is, will be sus sustainable. Mm. You know, and uh, there are also some other institutional mechanisms that will consolidate and sustain uh, the current effort we are putting uh, with the government to ensure that peace reigns across the states. You know, and um, while the policy of banding them over will be implemented, traditional rulers equally have additional responsibilities not to rest on their oars. River State guy. Okay, and now that um, we are gradually bringing them out and they are surrendering willingly you know without any f force mm. you know it is expected that we should do more to show that fatherly love on these children they mm. are our children anyhow you look at it mm. you know anyhow you look at it these are our children a traditional ruler cannot you know uh, you know uh, distance himself from these boys mm. because Every cultist is a member of the community. Every cultist is yeah. a member of the community. Yes, that's true. And every cultist is known by the communities. And so, there is no way, as a traditional ruler, hmm. you will claim that you don't know what is happening in your domain. Okay. You cannot. But, uh, your Majesty, I want to ask, uh, yes. when you interacted with them in, in the forest, uh, I want to congratulate you again for that bold step. Uh, what did they tell you actually uh, prompted them to take, choose this uh, part of life? Well, uh, you know, the general excuse is that there's no job. That's the general excuse, that there's no job, they are not empowered, uh, they are hungry. You know, but... But I'm these not, are able-bodied men. I'm not aware of any reverse man that has died of, of, hunger. of hunger. I'm not aware. You know? We are not in uh, in the desert where you don't farm, where there's no means of uh, uh, you know livelihood. Even those living in the des desert devise means of feeding themselves, not criminality. Mm. You know, and so we have additional responsibility as traditional rulers to show that fatherly love on these children. Mm. We have that responsibility, and if a traditional ruler shows love to these children. I want to assure you that they will not go back to crime. So the governor talked about reintegrating them uh, yes. into society. Yes. I, I pleaded with the governor to, to, you know, come up with uh, programs that will reintegrate them. Mm. You know, and His Excellency has given us some assurance. Mm. And like I told you, he's a visionary leader. So where are I they now? These it. boys that are, that are out of the front, where are they now? They are in the villages. They are, they are very well welcomed yes. by, by their people. They are in their various communities. Well, okay, we will take a listen again, uh, the governor, when he uh, also talked about um, 
proliferation of vigilante groups in River State. Uh, this is rising from the uh, visit of uh, Eze Ubu Upata, His Royal Majesty Dr. Felix Otuwarekbo, and other traditional rulers uh, from Awoda East and Awoda West local government area. Let's take a listen to the governor again. And be careful about this local vigilante. And be very careful. Because of what OSPAC is doing. OSPAC is a creation that wanted to handle Omok. But now, OSPAC is taking the laws into their hands. Now they will go live from, they will live Omok and go to another local government that they are keeping I will not allow that. OSPAC people will to integrate them to the security, neighborhood um, security watch if they want to work. And government will pay them. And they will pass on intelligence to security agencies. So I will not create. Because if we do that, every local government, every community want to go and create their own uh, uh, sort of land, then it becomes a problem for the state to control. Now that we have that neighborhood war scheme, everybody should key in if you really want to help a bear kingdom, if you want to help the uh, river state. So they should key in. Earlier is Stewardship with SNB. SNB. Your Majesty, you listen to the governor there, uh, planning to proscribe uh, some of these uh, vigilante groups uh, which are springing up here and there, particularly OSPAC, who, which we know operates in the Obai Bema Indoni area. Uh, did you also uh, seek the assistance of OSPAC? And why didn't we see the local government chairman of these two local government uh, areas? Well, the... The, Did you seek the, the assistance of OSPAC? The issue of uh, OSPAC, OSPAC mm -hmm. you know, um, His Excellency has made a good suggestion to integrate OSPAC into the neighborhood watch, uh, watch arrangement. If uh, that is done, it will help the security of the states. You know, what it means is uh, recruiting uh, the, the recruits of the neighborhood agency, you know, you know should. Uh, also liars with the leadership of OSPAC. In fact, I expect the Director General of the River State Network Safety Corps mm. to liars with the leadership of OSPAC to know what makes them that effective. Okay. Because there are situations that the security agencies cannot even penetrate certain areas. But these OSPAC boys can, can penetrate those areas. So it means there's something very unique about OSPAC. OSPAC. But like the like the governor said, you know, um, the, 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 the rule of their engagement, mm. you know, restricts them to Obaye Mema mm. and they Doni have local government. Extended their boundaries. You understand? Boundaries. But uh, there's no way OSPAC would have extended its boundary without uh, communities or local governments asking them to come for assistance. I believe that probably, I'm not speaking for OSPAC, but I believe that they are encroaching into other areas, maybe assistance sorts by those communities, you know. And uh, I want to use the opportunity to appeal to His Excellency that if they have overstepped their bounds, he should forgive them. But they are doing a very, very fantastic work. And uh, like he said, I wholeheartedly support the idea of OSPAC being integrated into the River State uh, Safety Corps Agency. But some are of the opinion that if they are reintegrated into the neighborhood watch arrangement, it may weaken the potency of OSPAC. Do you agree? <laughs> it, uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. You see, uh, it is not the name that matters. It is individuals that are driving mm -hmm. this process. You know, the, the OSPAC uh, you know, operatives are individuals who have made up their mind to ensure that security is restored in their domain. These boys who are carrying arms, they are just human beings like any of us. Mm -hmm. You know, but because we don't have the courage to confront them, mm -hmm. And so we are so scared, you know, but these OSPAC boys yeah. have the courage to confront yes. them. You know, so. Your Majesty, let's uh, give opportunity to our viewers to also participate. Yes. Hello, good afternoon, our first caller. Hello. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. You're on to Stewards with SNB. Hearing okay, the students of RSTV. Okay, You're who? You're who? Rafael, Rafael Baradé. Okay, Rafael Baradé from Ogoni. Yes, Go on, Rafael. Okay, sir, my contribution about uh, this program, I so much love you. Thank you. Because sometimes our youth, they don't understand what they are doing, and most of them also understand what they are doing. Okay. 
I am 35 years old by age, and I'm not my mother when I was 10 years old, and you know, then I'm all on my own. I can no work for government or no sponsor. But there was something that happened earlier this week, okay. which if I should go back, or well, actually I want to join. Raphael, you have, you, you have one minute to do what you're doing now. So your time, okay, your time okay, is really coming. Okay, what happened was that the government is also involved of these boys doing what they are doing. Because I'm a farmer, since I have 10,000 pieces of fish, and they came to my community, at Peter's community, to keep the road, and they destroyed the water, destroyed the road, and also destroyed my farm. Which will destroy it? Which will destroy it? The government, they came to keep the road, and they destroyed my fish. My 10,000 fish was lost. My poultry and my 3,000 was lost. Did you lodge your complaint? Did you, did, you, did you channel your, your complaint properly? Yes, sir. I did, and everything was abandoned. And my three kids now, they are dropped from school. You say you're 35 years of age? 35. From Ogoni? Yes, from Ogoni. All right, it's noted. We, we will, uh, His Majesty will respond to all of that. Your Majesty, you listen to him. From Ogoni, 35 years, Rafael Wabarao. So, uh, in the bar or whatever, I can't remember the sonny. Um, but he's a self uh, employed person. And then um, the road was to pass through his farm and it was destroyed. And then his farm land was destroyed and all that. So, no source of livelihood. Do you think this should uh, uh, propel him to go into cultism? I asked him if he has As much as I don't believe that uh, unemployment is uh, one of the reasons for cultism, you know, but... The, the boys complain about uh, hunger. Yes. No uh, job. These are some of the reasons the boys told me when I visited them in various camps. Lack of empowerment, no job, and all that. Of course, they fly these reasons. And if you look at it in some cases, like the case of this Raphael, of course you cannot, you know, fault what he has said, you know. So it, it is for the appropriate government agencies that are supposed to pay compensations to such persons should wake up and uh, carry out their responsibilities. I believe uh, the if uh, His Excellency hears this, mm. I'm not sure he will be happy with the appropriate ministry or agency mm. that has done this to this young man, mm. you know, by destroying his means of livelihood. Mm. It's not proper. And so I appeal to the government to look into his case, you know, because there are many instruments that compel somebody to be raw material mm. for violence. Okay. And destroying someone's means of livelihood mm. is one of those instruments. instruments. Okay, uh, Your Majesty, from the look of things, you and the Governor were full of praises for the JTF commander uh, and, of course, the, D the two DPOs of uh, Oda West and Oda East Local Government Area. And the area commander. Yes. Uh, what, to what extent did they support your effort? On the most times, sorry, uh, but Your Majesty, yes. most times, the people seem to have lost confidence in the security agencies. Yes. But here yes. we are, seeing you and the Governor. Maybe we'll just take a listen to the Governor before we come back to the question. Let's take a listen to the Governor. Studio, please assist us. Stewardship with SNB. The governor said the state government will reward the divisional police officer of Ahuda East and Ahuda West, the Joint Tax Force commander in the area, Major Wachiku, for their roles in promoting peace and security. So bring the, bring the two, the area commander, the two DPOs, and the major will give them an award for what they have done. We'll give them a word to encourage them to encourage them for me people who put their life out to protect us we must also try to appreciate them stewardship with snb snb holds you to account 
Whether situation. you are in school or not, any opportunity will create for skill acquisition. Please avail yourself that opportunity. And like I said, you can if also... You sleep around there, you know that they have what is called... Food. Your Majesty, you, you listened to the governor there. Uh, he was full of praises for the DPOs of the two LGAs, uh, Oda East and Oda West, as well as uh, the JTF commander. Uh, one would have thought that uh, oftentimes uh, the people uh, seem not to have trust and confidence in the secret agencies doing what they're supposed to do. But here we are, uh, they have been given a pat on the back. To what extent did they support your efforts? Honestly, um, I would say we are lucky at this time to have very, very committed officers, very committed officers, you know. Of course, uh, in course of my journey of life across the nation, I've had the privilege of working in different agencies and uh, all that, and I've uh, virtually, uh, you know, worked in uh, most states of this country. And I know the kind of comments people make uh, against the security agencies. You know, it is difficult for security agencies to cooperate with you when you distance yourself from them. Okay. Most times it's a matter of communication between the traditional institution and the security agencies. As a royal father, everyone in the kingdom, whether you are a security agent, you are a company chief executive, you are anyone, I consider them as my own children and I embrace all of them. And so I advise them, you know, you are not doing this one pro properly. Can you adopt this strategy so that we can achieve this result? And they listen, you know. And I want to tell you, the divisional police officer for Akinema, Ahoda West, yeah. was formerly divisional crime officer in Ahoda East, okay. you know. And him, the DPO, the JTF commander, and the area commander, you can't believe that these officers sleep in the bush most days. I see. If we have serious security challenge, I call them late at night. I say, look, and you must arrest this criminal. And they will leave the comfort of their homes and they go after, not sending their boys, they lead their teams to the bush to go and get these criminals. I see. And so it's... It's very rare to find exactly. uh, police officers and other security agencies do so. Exactly. Uh, you know, but because of the level of cooperation we, we, we extend to them. The traditional you know. institution. Yes. Your Majesty, you continue with that thought. Let's just allow our viewers to participate. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You're on to stewardship with SNB. I'm David. David calling from where, please? From what? David calling from Woji. David, you may ask your questions or make your contributions. Yeah. My contribution is that they see where uh, you uh, need to do. I don't blame them, sir. Because anything will happen. When they call police to me, David, could you hold on? Hold on. Hold on. Moment. David, hold on. Could you turn down the volume of your TV set? Then you continue. Yeah, turn down the volume. Or stay away from it. No. Uh, to avoid no, interference. No, yes, go on. Have you done so? Yes. To avoid interference. Go on, David. Yes. Because if they're not police at that moment, okay, police that will attend in that moment. D David, there's still interference. They, do it and now, they will come to our arrest of people where they are innocent of that thing. So if David, yeah, we lost it. We, we couldn't make any sense out of what he was saying. Did, did you hear him clearly? Uh, I think that was uh, his problem has to do with, uh, you know, when you, when people put a distress call to the mm, police, to the, police. Uh, the police don't respond immediately. And when they later respond... They will they, turn to be the suspects. They, no, they arrest innocent ones, okay. you know, who are not okay. the ones that... Okay. Uh, have, Did you experience committed. such things in... in, in no, I, I think it's a general complaint everywhere. Okay. It's a general complaint everywhere. But like I said, you know, the policing is not the responsibility of the police officers alone. Policing okay. is a collective responsibility. Okay. The community have their own responsibility in policing. 
you know, if you look at the number of police that is posted to a local government, and yeah, the police should, should act in such a way that will build confidence from the community. Yes, that, that, that's the that's the area I'm, I'm uh, trying to buttress. If you look at the, the number of uh, police officers in a local government and look at the population of that local government, you will discover that it's about one police to about uh, 2,000, uh, 1,000, 2,000 mm. persons. And so you cannot effectively, one police cannot effectively police mm. 1,000 persons. And so the cooperation from the communities by providing intelligence, timely intelligence, mm. you don't wait until crime is committed. When you notice that crime is about to be committed, you should communicate to the police. But unfortunately, people believe that when you pass information to the police, police will you know, uh, reveal the identity of the informant to the criminals. You know, I believe that these are, uh, let's say, these were things that happened in the past. Mm. You know, uh, the kind of police officers I have interacted with, especially in our area, mm. you know, I have not noticed such. You know, they are, I, I have, you know, I've been dealing with officers who have been so committed to their job, okay. who believe in ensuring that peace reigns. Probably and because you also create a neighboring environment for them no, to... No, because I, I told them that uh, we are desirous of investment in our area. We are desirous of government presence in our area. Yeah. You know, and so one of the things you need to do to have investors come into your area is to ensure that there is peace. And with our interaction with the security agencies, they have keyed in into our vision of restoring peace in our area for investments to come in. And because they have keyed into that vision, we are now working as a team okay. to achieve peace in our area. And so okay. traditional rulers have primary responsibility to you know, sell or market their vision to security agencies. Okay, Your Majesty, uh, you talked about oath taking. Uh, one is wondering, what kind of oath did you t give to this boy? But before you do so, let's take a listen uh, to you when you addressed uh, the press at Government House just after that brief ceremony. Studio, please assist us uh, with His Majesty. We visited our children in the camp, uh, in their various camps, and we talked with them. We invited them home and had several meetings with them. And after a period of time, confidence was built. And so we are able to persuade them to lay down their arms for the good of our area. Knowing full well that without laying down their arms, it will be difficult for government to continue to implement its programs in the area of projects and other infrastructure. He said that the Deputy Speaker of River State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Lehia Edison, supported the peace process, which included confidence building and the return of arms by repentant criminals. Particularly placed on record, Your Excellency, the support we received from Right Honorable Edison Lehia, the Deputy Speaker of the River State House of Assembly. The remaining, and so we are pleased, Your Excellency, to report to you that after several weeks of interaction and dialogue with our children. They have about 113 of them surrendered last week. And we took them to Olubie, the ancestral home of the Ekwe people, where traditional oath was administered on them. It's not just an ordinary oath, but it's an oath that any violation has very serious... Stewardship with SNB. SNB. Your Majesty, you told the Governor and, of course, uh, other guests there that the oath taking was not just an ordinary oath. One wants to know what kind of oath did you give to them and what makes you believe that they will not falter? Well, interestingly, uh, after the exercise at uh, Olubie that evening, on uh, last week Thursday evening, the boys were very happy that uh, we administered oath on them. What kind of oath did they, you they, oath? they told us that in the previous amnesty that no oath was administered. That was why they went back to crime. Okay. But with what we have done, that they will not even try going back to Your Majesty, crime. What kind of oath you know? did you give to them? Well, uh, before the coming of the white man to distort our traditional culture with his religion, with the white man religion. There was the African traditional There was the African religion. traditional religion. Okay. And uh, if you ask 
someone that has won a political position to be sworn in with Bible, he'll be very willing. Okay. Of course, the constitution allows it, though. Mm -hmm. But if you ask somebody that has won a political position to be sworn with, with traditional oaths, mm -hmm. he will not. Because if he violates it, he knows the consequence. Mm -hmm. Because the traditional oath is not like the Bible oath. You know, you can take... Uh, and the boys accepted the, the swear to it? Of course. We didn't force them. Because they are willing, because of the processes that led to their coming out, mm. they have made up their mind to embrace peace completely. And that's why they know the consequence of accepting that traditional oath. Mm. Because once you take it and you violate it, it is not tomorrow that the consequence will come. It's right there. And so as much as we practice a, a Christian religion as a modern way of life, we cannot throw away our tradition. I am not one of the traditional rulers that will advocate mm. that our tradition and culture and custom should be thrown away. Okay. I'm not one of those traditional okay. rulers. Okay, I get you there. So, <laughs> so let, let me just take the last call from this uh, viewer. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, please, uh, I want to you. Could you please say your name? Could you say your name? Could you say your name? Where are you coming from, please? Um, D-Line, You're Basi? Yes. Basi calling from D-Line. Basi, go on. Please. I want to continue. Why our assembly and national assembly? Basi, could you remove, no, no. Could you remove the phone from hand free? You said? Remove the phone from hand free. I should remove the Remove the phone from hand free. Yes, there's interference. Remove from hand free. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm actually. You yeah, have been heard now. Go on. Why I was taken as empty and national not come out with a law that you can see that anything that you can do should be key. Why do we think others think that are way past the time? They will let them. Why the other one is sitting every day by day in Australia is that they are such a big issue. We're struggling to hear him. And they need to be advocating that penalty. Mm. Okay. So, if I want to say, I can come up with a law that any other one that can be found should be cheap. Basi, thank you so much. We, we heard you. Basi, your time is up. Your time is up. We, we, we will, uh, his, his Majesty will respond to uh, your submission. Your Majesty, Basi is advocating for death penalty. Death penalty. Uh, but uh, thank God he didn't call for uh, judicial, extrajudicial killing. Yes. Uh, her death penalty is not the same thing as extrajudicial killing. Can uh, you respond to what he said? But some, time is not about some members of society believe that whoever carries out extrajudicial kidnap. Mm. Should also experience extrajudicial extra killing. killing. <laughs> 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 That's on the funny Just, side. Yeah. You know, uh, seriously speaking, uh, death penalty is not uh, fashionable in the 21st century. And uh, uh, aside from that, there are laws, you know, um, in River State. I, I know there is a law uh, against kidnapping. Yes. There is a law against uh, uh, cultism. Yes. I know in, in, in River State. Mm -hmm. The problem is not the laws. It's enforcement of uh, of these laws. You will be surprised that a criminal is arrested, and nobody will come out to give statement. There are several cases. In fact, mm -hmm. I'm handling one now in my domain. Everybody is afraid. Yes. You know, a woman was kidnapped. We rally around immediately to make sure she was rescued the woman herself has refused to come and give statement to the police mm. and so how do you prosecute such a person when there's nobody giving any statement it's been the person the is uh, innocent we're talking about. yes the police perhaps you know, has not given enough confidence you know, to the public to actually come no, forth the the society you know, the, the people have lived with fear over time of the that these cultists once you give any statement they will come after you you know, but we, we are doing our best to restore confidence in the people. All right, but you need to come out and say Your something. Your Majesty, time is not on our side. Yes. Uh, we have spent so much, nearly one hour. So, uh, but on, on on a last note, what would you would advise 
these repentant cultists, and you are colleague traditional rulers in one sentence. Well, in uh, the, tra the cultists uh, have uh, given us their words to repent. They should repent with all their hearts. Okay. And uh, for my colleagues in the traditional institution, they shouldn't be afraid of these cultists. They are our children. Okay. The traditional ruler should be bold enough to interact with his children and uh, bring them out. You are not bringing them to kill them. You are bringing them out so that they will be responsible and better citizens. Mm. You cannot marry in the bush and raise your children in the bush. So they need to come out to the open and raise their children at home. Advice to your, your colleagues. Yeah. And uh, for my colleagues, we should all join hands with the governor of River State to ensure that peace reigns in our domains. If we do that, River State will be a very fantastic place to live in. We should all join hands to uh, help the government fight criminality in our domains. These are some of the words coming from Ezebu Upata, His Royal Majesty Dr. Felix Otuwaripo, who is the chairman of Awuda East Council of Traditional Rulers, who has been talking to us for about one hour or so on how he was able to uh, lure and persuade some of these notorious criminals in these two local government areas, talking about Awuda East and Awuda West. I must tell you that uh, he deserves kudos. Your Majesty, thank you so much for being a part of this thank program. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And then to my colleagues who have been pressing right buttons behind the camera, I want to thank you so much. And our callers who have also been calling, I want to thank you. And for those whose calls we've not been able to pick, time is not on our side. We do believe that when we come this way again next Thursday, we'll be able to take all the calls. Thank you so much. My name is Solomon Nelson Braid, signing out to join you next Thursday. Bye-bye. What do you do on a Thursday afternoon? Having lunch? Taking a drink? Watching TV in your living room or office? How much do you know about the politics, economy, and how monies are being expended by those saddled with the responsibility of managing human, material, and natural resources? It's daring, incisive, revealing, and informative. Watch Stewardship with SMB every Thursday at 12.30 p.m. on RSTV. Join us. The Executive Governor of Rival State